Uh, thank you very much, Renee. Uh, I'm Tony Dill with uh, KF Armory. I'm a retired Special Forces Colonel, and today I have the uh, pleasure to introduce you the latest innovation in ballistic safety, the modular interlocking ballistic barrier system. Uh, today I'm going to show you uh, first a 30-second video of some of the capability testing that we've conducted with Department of the Army, uh, Department of Energy, the Air Force, and so forth. Um, then we're going to tell you three things, uh, what the blocks are, what they can be done with special operations, and then how they compare to some of the other products on the market. So first, uh, the quick video here. Okay, for the, uh, the, the MIBS-2, uh, they're available in three uh, uh, ratings right now. Uh, National Institute of Justice, which is a U.S. Uh, police standard, and United, uh, I'm sorry, Underwriter Laboratories uh, rating. So for handgun, that's uh, level three alpha, which is a uh, 44 Magnum. Rifle rated uh, NIJ-4 and UL-9, which is 30-odd six armor piercing. And then the 50 caliber rating, which is NIJ-4 special threat and 50 caliber uh, APIT armor piercing incendiary tracer and uh, UL-10. Uh, that rating uh, for the allies, that's a Stanag level four rating. Um, the blocks look identical, just as you see here. The density changes based on what the rating is for the block. Uh, the blocks are inter interlocking, they're fire retardant, which means you can shoot them with API and tracer. So if you have a shoot house for training and somebody accidentally uses a tracer, the entire house won't burn to the ground like with other products. Uh, they're self-healing polymer, so when the rounds enter inside, they're trapped, they don't ricochet. You saw in the video the deflection uh, up 15 degrees, no issue, and they'll trap inside the block no matter how close you get to fire them. And they're multi-hit rated. If you look at the picture to my left, that hole on the top picture, that's 126 rounds of 50 caliber armor piercing fired from 30 feet with a Barrett 107. At number 126, it pushed out number one and it fell down. That's a significant rating for anything that's ballistically rated. Um, the blocks, in addition to the, uh, the, to the rating for the um, NIJ and UL-10, the blocks have also defeated other rounds above their NIJ certified rating. Uh, some of the rounds are listed on the screen there. Uh, RPG-7, high explosive fragmentation, Mark 211 Ralphus, exploding tip 50 caliber, 30 millimeter fragmentation, and then several uh, EOD charges, 10 inch platter charges, uh, and, and hundreds of pounds of ammonium nitrate, explosive, and so forth. The picture to the bottom left of the screen, um, sorry, bottom right of the screen, um, that is the impact from an RPG-7 uh, HE frag at the last SOCOM demonstration. The, the indentation is about a half inch in where the detonator hit and all the shrapnel was contained inside the wall. How can special operations particularly use this? Uh, for the, the, the two uh, lines of effort, we got operational uses and then training uses. Uh, on the operational side, safe houses, embassies, and consulate protection. Uh, you could certainly put them all the way around your facility, but more than likely you want a strong point parts inside the facility, your generators, your entrance points, somewhere where you can't get heavy equipment inside to pour concrete or do something else to reinforce your, your uh, facility. Or if you want to change your configuration because of a new threat, you can have blocks on a pallet just like this and then move them forward wherever the threat is and then take them back up and pull them away. Um, also for VIP protection, I'm sure you've seen the Secret Service when they're protecting the president somewhere down range. When they get out of the vehicles, all they can do in an open area is put up a sniper screen, which essentially is a cloth and hope that nobody takes a shot at it. Something like this would actually provide ballistic protection just like you saw in the videos. Um, also for our, our aviators, this also can provide uh, aircraft separation um, for any kind of threat to the aircraft or in an arming location if there's an accidental discharge of the aircraft, which happens sometimes. On the training side of the house, it can be used anything from a mobile target so you can prevent damage to your existing facility or you can build an entire shoot house from scratch to match an enemy floor plan. So if you had some kind of hostage rescue element, they could build their shoot house to match that enemy floor plan and off they go. And just real quick, this is just a little model, again, using the blocks of what that would look like.
As far as how they compare to some of the other products on the market, you know, sandbags don't interlock and they fall over, so that's a problem. And then if there are any kind of uh, use during environmental hazards, the sandbag soil is contaminated, so you have to decon that later. Uh, the blocks can just wash right off. Uh, and you also have to have piles of sand, so if you're in an area where the soil is difficult to dig, that's a little hard to work with. There are certain uh, earth-filled containers. Uh, you need uh, scoop loaders or some kind of heavy equipment in order to load those. The bases I was operating in as a special operator, we did not have that kind of equipment. So either you had to hire locals with a shovel um, or do it yourself. And then when you were finished, you couldn't recover the, the containers. So that was a, a PR risk with the enemy because every time you left the base and turned it to somebody else, they would take it over and then film a music video, making it look like they overran your base. So that was always a PR loss. As far as cement T-walls, uh, they don't interlock and uh, create a sniper hazard on the corners and they fall apart once they've been hit multiple times with the ammunition and they also require heavy equipment to use, usually forklifts on the fobs. It, the water fill barriers, I have never seen a water fill barrier with water in it. Uh, either they crack, they leak, they freeze, or they're too heavy to move around. So usually they're empty and broken sitting there pretending to protect your soldiers. These can provide the same level of protection It's actually ballistic, and then you can take it apart and take it with you. If you send your soldiers forward to set up um, some kind of a checkpoint, again, they can dismount the blocks and they can be protected outside the vehicles. If they have a suspicious package or ID, they can wrap it up to reduce the safety zone required to, to work with that, uh, with that threat.